Today on Exploring Scotland's History, we're going to have a look at Loch Avoc, the traditional tales and the history surrounding the loch and the area. But first of all, we're having a little walk. I would make it clear, Loch Avoc is beautiful, one of the lesser known lochs in the Argyll area. To be fair, I think there is a reason for that. That is the worst, windiest, uphill, down dale, really thin, single road with very few passing places road I've ever been on. I've had to stop a couple of times because the travel sickness took the better of me. So come and see Loch Avoc. It is beautiful. Make sure you take your tablets first for travel sickness. Look at those bluebells. get back into this jalopy and we'll head back onto the loch. We have arrived at last on Inchluiana on Loch Avoc. Away up in that undergrowth is a castle. We have seen it on our lap with the canoe. I think it's going to take a heart like a lion to get up to it, but let's go. Right, update. We can see the castle. It's up at the top of that hill. I'll show you in a minute. This is not for the faint hearted. We are walking over a rubble that is pretty much moving underneath our feet. So, you need to be a bit of a mite and goat to get up here. I'm just a goat. But that is the castle. And he seems to be getting a wee bit closer to it, but I don't know whether we're going to make it up or not. We'll give it a good attempt. Most of this castle has gone. Not gone. It's fallen down round the island. I can only imagine the amount of wildlife that these fallen rocks are actually supporting. So while we're sitting here, I will tell you the story of how the castle got its name. The story goes that there was a builder from Edinburgh who had been commissioned to build the tower house or the castle here. He brought his son to help with the building works. They stayed at the master's house and the master had a maid servant and she had beautiful red hair. Well, the builder's son took a wee notion for her and had his wicked way with her. The building work continued and eventually the castle was completed. The young man went to say goodbye to his summer love, I guess, and he found her in tears. And she told him that the master was going to kill both him and his father in order that he didn't have to pay the bill for the castle. Well, the young man's father was having none of it and he managed to get the master's son and hold him until the bill was paid in full. That was fine, bill paid, the builder and the son 
they headed off back to Edinburgh, but the master started thinking that there must have been some weak link, and he decided that the servant girl had maybe told the builder and the son what had happened, which of course she had. So he took her up to the top of the three-storey tower house and threw her to her death. And that is why the castle is named after her, because apparently she haunts these ruins. On a beautiful day like today, it's hard to believe, but I think on a misty day in this lock, you would start seeing red-haired ladies that would be quite angry. Despite this being such an intriguing castle with the story of its name, there is actually very little written history on it. It is, for certain, one of the Campbell Old Strongholds. It would have originally been a 16 metre high, three storey tower house. It is suggested that the floors would have been timber and that the roof would have been thatch. The window jams are sandstone and they're presumed to have come from the Bridge of All Quarry just up the road from where we live. Who built this castle is lost to history. The manuscript history of Craignish in and around 1700 suggests that the name of the castle was after a brunie that frequented the island. Obviously we have a different story there, but that's the thing with tradition. Pick the story and run with it. Where probable history is we would suggest that the castle was maybe named after a particularly flame-haired lady. It is known and it is recorded that into the Campbell family was married some of the ladies from Souvene who built Castle Swing. I'll put a link up to uh, Castle Swing. We visited there a couple of years back. It's quite an edifice. The hills out yonder in the distance, just behind the lock, were the scene of a few battles and a few interesting stories. And I'll tell you them now. I'm going to tell you about the Battle of the Brothers. There were two brothers, Anf Kela and Seelback. Their father had died and Seelback, being the eldest, had taken over the kinship of Lorne, which was sort of the, the big master clan of the area. There were other clans in the big areas as well. Like I say, Sealback was the eldest brother, so he took over from the father and managed to reign for a full year before his younger brother had other ideas and drove the guy out of the area and as far as Ireland. Sealback, however, did come back and decided that it was time for him to take back control. His brother and himself met at Finneglen, just over the lock here, and a battle ensued where the younger brother was killed. Sealback resumed his role as the head of the kinship of Lorne. It didn't last a year. The very same year, the kinship of Kintyre marauded up here. They had a massive battle and Sealback lost. That, incidentally, was the very first sea battle ever recorded in the British Isles. So now I'm going to tell you about another battle, the String of Lorne. The String of Lorne refers to really the string of tower houses and fortalices and that that ran right from here, from Inch Luana, right up through Argyle that were all the different Campbell strongholds. And this was really sort of the end of Argyle's area as such, which is obviously why we would have others coming in marauding. The area also saw a battle in 1294, and it was our friends, the Campbells again. This time it was the Campbells and McDougalls, and it was a land dispute. The McDougalls hadn't got off on a good foot on their way through to here, and again, it was Finna Glen. They had dipped their crystal in the Loch Awe and it had cracked. Part of the McDougall clan really found that to be a bad omen, so they shipped off back home. 
leaving a much smaller contingent of McDougalls to carry on to Fine Glen to complete this battle. It started off badly. The Campbells were ready to fight as soon as the McDougalls had arrived. And it wasn't long into the battle until it appeared that the Campbells were actually going to win, except for a McDougall archer. He stood up on the mound and shot an arrow and took out the chief of Clan Campbell, Big Colin. That was the end of things for the Campbells. They got their chief rolled up, tidied up and shipped out to get buried at Kilcrenlan. An interesting aside to that battle was the loss of the Campbell Piper. Beheaded by a Campbell. Yeah, you heard right. The Campbell Piper was piping his lament as they did in battle. One of the Campbell fighters thought, hmm, that sounds more like a McDougall tune. I think he is siding with the McDougalls. In his absolute pent up rage, he took off the head of the Piper with a single swipe of a sword. Now, there was someone else apparently at this battle, clearly not doing too much fighting because he was able to note afterwards that he saw the piper play three or four notes as his head hurtled to the ground. Don't let the truth get in the way of a good story, eh? Loch Avoc has a cranog just beside the little island of Elaine Frech, which is Heather Island. There's actually a boulder mound 40 metres by 32 metres at the base of this cranog. Archaeologists have recorded extremely well preserved timber underneath the water surface. They also find wood chips and hazelnuts. There was one particular piece of timber which actually had tool facets on both ends. They presumed the wood was alder. There appears to be no surviving causeway between it and the island of Elaine Freoch, or indeed the mainland. We have now left Loch Avic, that's it off in the distance, and we have come along to the old drove road. Cattle droving is as old as time itself, and I said the cattle droving was at its height between 1500 and 1850. A lot of the old droving roads have become the main arterial roads that we use today, not this one of course. It's also worth pointing out that not all cattle droving was organised movement of cattle to pasture or market, as we would assume. Quite a lot of it was rustling and thieving, and clan battles would have broken out over people stealing each other's sheep and cattle. I'm heading down the road now to Loch Avoc House. It was once apparently a hunting lodge. It was historically called Dunaveran Lodge. The house is now a luxury summer rental property. The land and the old name of Dunaveran are mentioned in records in 1414 and discussing the penny land. So what is a penny land? Well, a penny land is a unit of measurement in the old Scottish language, though it is presumed that it actually came from Norse origin. The unit described 
is basically the amount of land that would have paid a rent of an ounce of silver. These lands, however, could be subdivided if required. The land behind the house has one single private grave. It was discovered when, guess what, forestry operations, but they did unearth the person's grave and they left it be. This hill's quite steep. We're just making our way up the River Avoc currently and right centre frame there are what we presume to be the old Victorian remains of the hydro system. The River Avoc Falls sits amongst this absolutely stunning ancient Caledonian forest. The falls have been eased somewhat to aid with the migration of fish from the larger Loch Awe. Brown and rainbow trout pike and perch can all be fished here and you will get the odd salmon in Loch Avoc too. It's just stunning. Obviously you should get your fishing license in order to get the fish out of the loch and believe me every 200 yards there's a sign reminding you to get your fishing license. There's also lots of padlock gates and chains, so just be aware when you come. So that was our look at Loch Avoc and the surrounding area. And all that's left really for me to do is to walk down the rest of the hill past these beautiful waterfalls. I'll leave you some pictures and footage of what we find on this short but steep little waterfall walk. If you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Feel free to join me on my other social media Instagram and Facebook the links are below as is the link for buy me a coffee which I'm eternally grateful for everyone who does donate. Thanks for watching.